I'm Richard Dawkins, University of Oxford, and I gave the Christmas lectures Christmas 1991. This is a heavy cannonball. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to release it. And it's going to come, it's going to go over there, and it's going to come roaring back towards me. And all my instincts are going to tell me to run for it. <laughs> but I have enough faith in the scientific method to know that it's going to stop just about an inch short or perhaps less, of my head. <laughs> so here goes. <laughs> the title of the lectures was Growing Up in the Universe, and I meant growing up in a number of different senses. There's the child growing up and discovering for herself what a wonderful place the universe is and what a thrill it is to understand it. Then there's humanity growing up in understanding, which is the progress of science, the history of science. Then there was um, growing up in the sense of evolution, in the sense of our, our evolution from our sort of bacteria or whatever they were beginnings through mammals and primates to become the species we are now when we really do have a, a large measure of understanding thanks to the development in history of modern science. DNA comes like an ever-flowing river down the generations. The river of DNA that flows through us into the future is a pure river that leaves us exactly as it finds us. With one exception. There are occasional, very occasional, random changes called mutations. Because of these, there is variation, genetic variation, in the population and that opens the way for natural selection. A children's audience is quite a frightening audience because they're in some ways harder to please than an adult audience. One of the nice things about doing the Christmas lectures is that it's a, it's an, it's a key to open many doors and if you ring up almost anybody in the country and say, I'm doing the Christmas lectures, can you help? They instantly say yes. And so you can get really quite complicated and expensive apparatus uh, and people will um, from all over the country will deliver. We had a virtual reality company that sort of downed tools and spent an enormous amount of time and trouble making a virtual reality version of this lecture theatre, no doubt very advanced for its time, where a child could come up and put on headphones and goggles and would see a very vivid representation of a three-dimensional world. Uh, so you could fly around the RI lecture theatre in virtual reality. Um, and that was something which I couldn't have done but for the RI because the, the, the Christmas lectures have become so well respected in the country uh, with their noble history going back to Faraday that, that you can get whatever you like. Well, this idea reminds me of a brilliant passage from one of my favourite works of fiction, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. In fact, I'm so fond of this passage that I was wanting somebody to read it out. Would anybody like to volunteer? We put in various jokes, and uh, one was because I wanted to uh, have somebody read from one of Douglas Adams' book, a very interesting idea, very wittily expressed, of the idea that one might breed a species of animal which actually wanted to be eaten and was capable of telling us so. And that would remove at a stroke the moral objections to uh, eating meat. And Douglas Adams had a very, very witty uh, story in which he it's a science fiction fantasy about such an animal and the obvious thing to do would be to ask a child to come up and read this right. paragraph but then we thought wouldn't it be fun to get Douglas Adams himself your name is uh, Douglas Douglas what uh, Adams Douglas Adams what an amazing coincidence A large dairy animal approached Zaphod Beeblebrox's table, a meaty bovine quadruped with watery eyes, small horns, and an ingratiating smile on its lips. Good evening, it lowed and sat back heavily on its haunches. I am the main dish of the day. May I interest you in parts of my body?